So Katie and I have made it to Missouri and we are at a farm <laughs> where they have emus. Katie and I are a little terrified of emus, but we've been told that they are pretty much exactly like horses. You just treat them like horses. You can ride them all you want. Um, you do have to hoof them just like a horse. Put shoes on them? Yep, you put shoes on them just like horses. And so we hang are- on, Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh. There are a lot of weird misinformation here that we need to clear up about emus. Do I have that wrong? Uh, you're pretty close. <laughs> All right, 9.30. It's only like 30 minutes less than what I wanted to leave from. It's not bad. For us, it's amazing. Um, we're gonna be going out of New Mexico into the panhandle of Oklahoma. Up to Kansas and then up into Missouri. Yep, it's only 703 miles. We got this. We got this. We should reach your destination by 8.59 p.m. Mm -hmm. We should, but we won't. <laughs> no, not, not even close. <laughs> I thought it was interesting, maybe. We are at an elevation of 8,258 feet. That's high. Yeah, that's more than a mile high. Crazy. It's almost a mile and a half high. Definitely the landscape has changed from Taos to here. It's very interesting. I don't know what I was expecting New Mexico to look like but this is not it. So this is a little bit more about what I envisioned New Mexico looking like. We're passing through Springer, New Mexico, and there was a big sign that just said, do not pick up, pick up hitchhikers in this area. Thank you. Springer Correctional Institution. <laughs> Did you plan on pitch picking up some hitchhikers? No, but I also didn't plan on many things in my life that I did, so. <laughs> Since you and I have never been to Oklahoma, I thought it'd be fun, instead of passing into Oklahoma in the truck, we can walk it hand in hand. Let's go. We're walking into Oklahoma together. <laughs> Are you ready? 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 One, two, two three, three, go! We are at White House on the Hill. Hi. <laughs> and this is Jake and his kids and his emus. Uh, yeah, we're, we're learning a lot. <laughs> Apparently I don't listen very well. They're nothing like horses. Oh, no. <laughs> nothing like horses. <laughs> you don't ride them. Probably more like anything else than horses. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here uh, visiting. We might help him with a little bit of chores later in the day. Um, we are taking up one of his I think you have like three days of really nice weather. Yeah. And so far you've spent most of it with, most us. Of it with us just showing us around. So thank so you. So by like that. Thursday when it's back really in the forties again, I'll be Don't get packed. I'll be uh, Don't cursing your name yes. for, <laughs> for taking your you beautiful send us taking this beautiful weather day that I could do my work. <laughs> so one thing we learned is that emus love shiny things. And if you're gonna go into an emu hen, don't wear earrings. Uh, they're going watch, after my... Watch your ears. Oh yeah, they're going after your buttons. Yeah, yep. the buttons. But other than that, they're very... Well, these are very friendly. I don't know if all yeah. of them are. I don't really know either. We're... This is the only three we've ever had, so... Okay. They're friendly. We hand-raised them, but... I'm not sure how they'd, how they'd be if they were a little more... Uh, yeah. Uh, left alone to their... Mm -hmm. To themselves. This is Cashew. We did all names that rhymed with Emu, so... Oh, we okay. Have that makes sense. Bamboo the Emu, Cashew the Emu, and Peekaboo the Emu. This is Tree Mew the Emu. <laughs> Cashew and Peekaboo are two, they're the sisters. 
and they're females and it's pretty cool they, they do this drumming sound mm -hmm. which you may be able to hear on camera but the cool thing feel this area right under here is like their air sac oh yeah and the males don't have that wow and so that's where they make this drumming sound and then they even have uh they have little wings right down here oh, they do actually have wings these little oh, yeah. tiny little, little wings <laughs> <laughs> they don't like it when i touch them like don't make fun of my wings so we've hatched out some animals that are native to other parts of the world we've hatched out peacocks and they're the national bird of india and so we had a lot of indian viewers that would watch that and they were kind of amazed by seeing them because um, they have them there in the wild okay. but they're not allowed to touch them so they were fascinated that we could touch them and then when we hatched out the emus australians it's their national bird and they were kind of upset with us that they had them in the wild there but they weren't allowed to keep them under in captivity unless they had a rehab license mm. and so they were kind of upset that they when they found out americans were allowed to own them but i get some interesting things all the time like one of the the slogans about them is that the emu is something like seen in their country as like uh, like a motivational thing like that they only move forward and so they kind of see it as like their country like we're only moving forward we don't ever move backwards and so they are under the impression that emus are unable to go backwards and they, they'll go backwards but that's one of the uh things that they thought because it's like a somehow a slogan mm. of their country mm. is to move forward like the emu that they won't back up as soon as somebody messaged me i had to go out and like and check to and see like check up. like can you back up can you back up and like oh they'll back up our emus last year they didn't lay any eggs and now there'll be three this winter and they are they're opposite season of, of any other bird all the other birds will lay in the spring or summer but since these guys came from australia um 30 40 years ago they still haven't like changed their season and so they lay in the winter here because it's summer there and so they're they're supposed to start laying this winter so we're really excited i come out and check every morning like any eggs yet hoping that i'll see some and and uh i'm really excited for the day that they start doing that so feed this one through this back into there oh turn hang on it's got to be that way okay feed that into this one okay Yep, right there. Hi, ducky duckies. Hello, ducky duckies. Quack, quack. All right, I'll have you come in. Okay. Okay, you ready to do that? You ready? Mm -hmm. Is he ready for you? Yep. Okay. Sometimes they actually do a thing where they they get too worked up and they almost like pass out, but start closing their eyes and stuff. All right, so we've got Nate here from the Kramer Life, and you're here with Blaze, our red golden pheasant. Have mm -hmm. you ever held a, a red golden pheasant before? First time. What do you think of this guy? Uh, beautiful, gorgeous. Think you guys ever have a bird like this? What do you think, honey? I think we could. Oh no! Oh! oh no. <laughs> I wanted to make sure to not grab those feathers. It's hard to resist. It really is. <laughs> Perfect. You gonna run out the aviary? Go ahead. So we'll have we'll have this fence that I don't know they, they said it's in like it's three or four meters behind so I think it's like 12 fish okay 12 or 15 feet behind that will be the outer fence wow. initially what we wanted was a tall fence like somewhere just out beyond this like that went all the way to the top and that was initially what they were going to do but I think they were worried about snow load of a really tall fence getting pulled inward and so they went with uh, an eight foot fence that'd go a foot in the ground, so it'd be seven feet above the ground. And then there'll be a cable, I think from the top and then one from the ground. Mm -hmm. And they'll both go up mm -hmm. to the pole, the pole and then they'll run to the middle. And then there'll be cables running between all of them. And so it'll support the netting there and then down to the fence. And then we'll have some kind of gate over here for a vehicle 
bigger gate and then we'll have a like an airlock a double gate mm -hmm. that we'll have that will go in somewhere over there so we started working on the pond we just had a, a neighbor that had a, a bobcat that that uh, had started digging this out as best he could with the bobcat we really need like an excavator to dig it a little deeper mm -hmm. and i think our plan is one we need like a well something to in case we need to fill it up because i'm afraid they're going to get pretty dirty and i think we're going to dig a the cliff to go down to the creek is right over there and so i think we'll dig a trench and then we'll do like a pipe or something to clean it out if mm -hmm. we need to okay we may try to put a, a pump or something to filter it mm -hmm. but uh, i don't know we'll see if we have enough uh, solar power or something to run that and so the pond will be for the mandarin ducks the waterfowl and then everyone else to drink from but mostly they'll be in there all the time and then we'll have the pheasants and even though they are a flighty bird, they actually like to stay more on the ground. So I think they'll be running around in here. And then the peacocks, they really love to fly. And so when we used to have them out, they were always on top of buildings. I imagine they'll be on top of the building a lot. And so they'll be there, but we made the, this coop just for the birds to get out of weather, like in the, in the snow that they can go in there and then they can, uh, the peacocks and maybe the pheasants will lay eggs in there, we'll see. Mandarin ducks will have their nesting boxes out here, so we'll put solar. We got like electricity run to over here, and then we'll put the solar in, mm -hmm. and we'll keep their feed in here. And then this is their their side of the coop that they have their the guineas will come in, come in here at night, but the guineas won't be in here at that time. But this is where like peacocks and guineas can come. So in. they come in through that. So they come in through that door. They'll be it'll be open all the time, mm -hmm. so they can always come in and out. They'll be safe in here. So. That's only three guineas. So if you have 10, 15 of them, that's... Wow. They're really noisy. <laughs> so last, like, uh, October, November, we finished the, the coop. And then we had the electrician come in, put the poles in. And then we thought, it should be pretty easy to track down some fencing. And then it's taken us nearly a year to, to figure that part out and then get it ordered. And so we're supposed to get that in January so we can start working on it spring and then hopefully sometime spring to summer, it'll it'll be closed in. And then if we have the pond, if we have the pond where we want it, then we'll, we'll be ready to bring the animals in. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just probably keep working on the, the layout, the nature, the try to make, uh, put more trees in here and try to make it like this this kind of little jungle mm -hmm. for the birds to fly around in and have mm -hmm. fun in here. Mm -hmm. So it just, it takes our, one of our our big goals for just having a fun place to, to come and hang out with the birds. We always just had a passion for birds. And so we have these different, we love to have a homestead and, and raise animals for food, but then we also love to uh, be around the, all the birds and the animals and just enjoy their, their company. And so mm -hmm. that's a big part of what we do is just try to enjoy. That's why we have the emus. That's people will ask why we have certain things that maybe not be, they don't make sense on a homestead yeah. uh, where they're not producing something. And a lot of things that we just have are for, for our enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what a lot of this is. Yeah. So we have the outdoor doors, but mm -hmm. we pretty much always go in just to make it easier. Yeah. And then we, we got any that are in the boxes out or just to check on them. Oh, yeah. Is it usual for them to slow down this time of year? Yeah, it's about that time. We usually go, as soon as it gets real cold, that first real cold spell, we got a little bit and then it's warm and then we'll leave that for them to enjoy. Um, yeah, we'll get down to a point where we get maybe two eggs a day or something. And after about a month, after about a month, it starts to. The rest of the winter, even if it's cold, they'll start laying really good again. But oh, they, okay. they take about a month to really to all do their uh, their molt. Really shut down for a little bit. So this is this is our our main guy. This is Johnny Cash. He's our I am Chimani rooster. He's an I am Chimani. So he's an all black, all black chicken. He used to have an all black comb too, which was gorgeous. And then he got frostbite in the winter. And when it grew back, it grew back a little red. But the best, I, the best I am chimani's are all black. Like this is the I am chimani hen. So her comb is, her comb is all black. So for like people that, there's people that just breed I am chimani's, and that's what they want to look for is the, 
Like black tongue, black comb, everything black on him. Um, this guy's pretty cool. There's not many people that have one like that. That's a chamois Spitzalbin. His, uh, his comb on top. Look at this comb. It's like, it's like devil horns. So we went to visit White House on the Hill, like you guys know. And we did not know that you guys were such big fans. So we wanted to give you guys some options. Oh. And then the pen. And since one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or um. since we're one shy. <laughs> so the oldest gets to choose first and then the, and then the next age and then the next age that goes from oldest to youngest I gets to choose. I, there, I, I'm like, oh, is he going to pick the peacock or the pen? Yep. The pen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's the next age? Leva. Leva. And I He's think gonna I'm going to be nice to Micah. I'm probably going to pick this. Show us what you picked. Nice. Okay, who's next? Guys, obviously the dollar. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Mike is probably gonna pick the doll. No, he won't be. Yeah, the peacock. Yeah. What is it? Okay, who's next? Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. The doll. Yes. Show us what you uh, Show what you Nice. Very good. This is Bamboo, and this is um, their dog. This is Joey. Joey. And this one is... Their, their special I black... I am um, Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. I am Tremonti, but I can't remember the name. Yeah, the yeah. Worst, What's the name, Marilyn? I don't remember the name. You don't remember it? Johnny? You want Joey, the doggy? Johnny. Oh. Right. Micah, which one do you pick? Uh-oh. He's the yeah. Yeah. The emu? Oh, yeah. All right. And so, Benji will get the chicken? He will get the chicken, yeah. Benji, do you want the chicken, buddy? <laughs> chicken? Come get it. What's Can that? Can you show him what you got? Chicken sticker. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.